Ross? Oh, hi, Dad. What are you thinking about? Nothing. Well, maybe just... What was Mom like? Your mother. Well, where do I start? In many ways, she was very similar to Princess Erica. Princess Erica? Yes, she was gentle, but also very strong. She could share others' pain. I see. What's wrong? Do you miss her? I was just thinking... When was the last time we visited her grave? Not since we left the village and started this journey. It's been so long. She must be lonely. Ross. When the bandits attacked the village, we had to leave. Mom's grave is still there. Yes. Dad. Ross, let's go home when this war is over. To the village where Risa rests. Dad. We could rebuild the village again. Just the two of us. They're all, that's where we belong. You, me, and your mother. Yes. All right, but I'll have to be a lot stronger to help with that. We better start training, Dad. If you insist, show me what you've got. Ah! That all you got? Ah. Mm -hmm. ah. Ugh. Ha. Ugh. Ah. Mm -hmm. Ah. Whoa. All right. Good. That's it for today. Whew. Wow. Whew. Whew. You're strong, Dad. <laughs> Finally getting the hang of it, boy. Stroke is heavier. Your swing is definitely improved. <sighs> yes. Been practicing all the time. Even when I'm not in battle. Maybe someday, I'll even surpass you. You're getting stronger, no doubt about it. But I'm not gonna let you win. You have to get there yourself. Now you're talking. Higher the hurdle, bigger the reward. All right, I'm gonna go practice my swing. See you later, Dad. All right, boy. Risa, you'd be so happy. Ross has grown into a strong young man. Ross. What is it, Dad? Ow! 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 What are you doing? That hurts! You're crushing my shoulder! Ross. What's wrong, Dad? Ross, I'm gonna be sentimental for a moment. Bear with me. Huh? You may be almost grown, but you're all I've got in this world. It's true that your skills have improved, but don't act foolishly. Huh? There's no greater tragedy than when a parent must bury his child. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah, I understand. It's just weird to hear you talking like this. I guess I've been getting a big head. No one is invincible. Yes, that's right. And when you start to think you are, that's when you're the most vulnerable. I was just all puffed up when you said I had proved. I'll be careful from now on. I haven't told this to anyone. I guess dads could see these things. No matter how old you get, you'll always be my son. Yes, and I'll always look up to you. Brother Arthur! Yes? And you must be... I'm... Naimi! Ah, Naimi. 
I'm sorry that our introduction has been so delayed. And please, just call me Arthur. Brother is too formal. Oh. Alright. Arthur it is. Very good. Ah! What is it? What's wrong? Oh. <clears throat> Nothing. Sorry. But... That hand mirror hanging from your waist... Oh, this? It's a keepsake from my mother. I had it stolen from me once, so I made this leather strap for it. I can tie it to my belt and take it with me everywhere now. It's... Excuse me, but may I look at it for a moment? Hmm. Yes, well, that is interesting. If my memory serves, this is quite a valuable mirror. It is a gift given only to clerics of the highest order. Few of these mirrors exist, and for you to have one means your mother... Yes, she was a cleric. When I was young, an illness... Say no more. I understand. But seeing you in the mirror she left you tells me something. Your mother was a good person, benevolent, faithful, and caring. And you are the product of her care, filled with the same light. Thank you. Makes me happy to hear that. I'm delighted to have met you. We shall have to speak again. I hope so, Arthur. See you soon. Nami, it's an honor to speak with you again so soon. Oh, Arthur! Yes, I'm happy to see you. That's an impressive bow. Am I to understand that you're an archer? I've heard the others speak highly of your skills. Thank you. And I was watching you use your magic. It was pretty incredible. Oh, it was nothing. I'm just a novice. Oh. Nami, I see you've put your mirror away, have you? Hmm? Huh? I don't... I think I did. What? What does that mean? Oh no! I've lost it! What am I going to do? Lost? How could that happen? That mirror is a precious artifact, not to mention an important keepsake. The leather strap. It's torn. <laughs> oh, don't... Please don't cry. Don't worry. We'll look for it together. <laughs> Any idea when you lost it? I think I... had it with me when the battle started. It was... right there on my belt. And it must be around here somewhere, right? I'll go look over here. You check the ground back there. Oh, all right. I couldn't find it here. Any luck there? I can't find it. Don't worry, it has to be around somewhere. Just keep looking. I'll ask the others too. Alright. I'll just go look over here. Oh, Nami. How am I ever going to find it in the middle of a battlefield? I suppose I simply must have faith. Yes, that's it. Faith will guide me to her mother's mirror. Nami! Arthur. Look! I found it! Here. Oh. I've been asking around since the last time we spoke. I found out that our convoy master had found a mirror lying on the ground. When I asked to see it, imagine my delight when I saw it was your mirror! 
I'm so... so happy! You know, when I was looking for your mirror, I was reminded... I had a similar experience when I was young. That's why I chose to be a monk. What happened? One day, when I was just a little boy, I had lost a toy and I was crying. I lived near a monastery. One of the monks saw me sitting there weeping. He spent his day trying to find out why I was so sad and to cheer me up. It was so trivial. That toy was nothing but a trinket. But to me, it had value. I later find out a friend of mine had taken it without asking, but... Anyway, I was very happy that someone had stopped to show so much concern. To everyone else, I was just a petty child weeping over a toy. To this monk, however, I was a sad and lost soul crying out in need. He was so kind, and he spent so much of his day on a child's tears. I admired his attitude, even then. It was then that I realized that I could honor his deed by becoming a monk. And that's why... Yes, that's why. Oh, your mirror. Here you go. Oh. I'm really happy. Ah, just as I thought. What? Your smile is delightful. It's a vast improvement on those tears. The heavens themselves must have wanted to see that smile and conspired to help me find your mirror. Thank you, Arthur. I'm so grateful. No, Naomi. I'm grateful to you. Talking to you makes me feel at peace. I feel like some of the others make light of me from time to time. Oh, that's only... It's just because you're so honest and pure of heart. Someone I know teases me a lot, too. All the time he teases me. I see. I'm sorry to hear that. Well, it's not that he's all bad. He can be very kind, but... But you're kind too, Arthur. Thank you. You know, when you meet someone, that person reflects back at you like a mirror, revealing within them the emotions that you project. Angry people bring out the anger within others, just as sullen, hopeless people bring out nothing but the sorrow within all those to whom they speak. Do you know why so many people seem kind to you, Naomi? It's because you yourself are a kind person. You bring that out in others. Oh, Arthur, that's so kind. I mean, uh, thank you. Please, Naomi, always hold that kindness close to your heart. I will. Good day to you, Princess! What a funny thing that we should meet here! It is Providence, I tell you! Flourishell, it is not Providence! It's not even a coincidence! We agreed to meet here when our... when we planned out our battle strategy! Wait, don't tell me that you don't remember that! We planned this? I suppose I simply don't usually worry about such trifling details! And here we are, so I suppose that our plan must be working. I suppose you're right. Still, divine providence or not, isn't it strange and wonderful? A beautiful princess traveling with such a ragged bunch as this. You could have told me much sooner, you know. My apologies. Necessity demanded that I conceal my identity at the time. Oh, it is no longer any worry. To be honest, I believe I had you figured out your had figured out your ruse from the very moment we met. I said to myself, this lovely woman could only be of my own superior breeding. After all, you could never truly fool a woman with my keen mind. My how 
impressive. There is something about nobility that simply cannot be hidden from its kin. Why, Erica, certainly you must have felt the same thing upon seeing me. You surely saw a refinement and grace of carriage surpassing that of common folk. Uh... <laughs> yes, why, um... Very first time I met you, I could see that you... You were very... Far from common. Exactly! Far from common! I could not have put it better myself. It's simply impossible to travel incognito these days. Take that! And that! And that! And that! Larisha, what are you doing? I'm practicing! I want to be prepared for when those fiends show up next! You can never tell where or when they'll appear, after all. And they, if they were to appear, I would be, and I were unable to prepare a magical attack. Well, I'd like to be ready to whack them with the staff of mine. Uh, don't you think that's a bit, well, dangerous? Perhaps you should stop. If monsters appear when I'm around, I promise I'll come to your aid. That's simply no good, Erica. You know how these monsters can be. I insist I be able to hold my own, relying on nothing but my skills. I've been curious about something, Larishelle. Why are you so obsessed with fighting monsters? My parents were kind people. I would be like them if I am able. My home of Rustin is so near to Darkling Woods, We've experienced many sudden raids. My parents took it upon themselves to defend our people against the monsters. I had no idea. Yes, but my parents are gone now. I've been told that they passed away when I was but an infant. They gave their lives defending many helpless people. I'm so sorry. Oh, you needn't be sad. I would not want for that. No, it's wonderful that they gave their lives battling that filth. I was so young that I do not remember their faces, if I must be honest. However, that does not diminish the pride I feel for what they've done. Don't you feel lonely at the loss of your parents? No, not at all! What do you take me for? Some kind of weakling? No, I see that you're strong indeed, Lenershell. I should say so! But... Would you not say that you are strong too, Erica? Your father stayed in his castle, fighting the forces of Grotto. He had a noble death, don't you think? Your father was a great man. You must be quite proud of him. Well, yes. He refused to take even one step in retreat from the advancing Grotto soldiers. But still... I mean, I... I would have thought no less of him if he had fled. Even if he were no longer a brave king. Still... I would be happier if you were still alive. Erica. I do understand you. Everyone would tell me of my parents' bravery, of their honor. But I will never see them. I'll never know them for myself. Oh, what I would give if I could have met them just once. Larisha. Erica, please hold for a moment. What is it, Larishelle? About what we were discussing earlier. I would not want you to get the wrong idea. I was not saying I was lonely because my parents were dead. 
I'm not that weak, you know. I've never even cried when thinking of my parents. I know, Larishel. You are a very strong person. We're lucky to have you with us. I hope you do not think this all too sudden, but... Here, look at this. What's this? This ruby has been in Rustin for generations. It is a valuable gem. I would be honored if... I would like for you to have it. What? No, I couldn't. It's far too precious to accept. No, I mean it. Please, accept this as a gift. Here. I won't allow you to refuse. Larishel. Thank you. I will treasure it. I so wish I had something to give you in return. You needn't feel that way. Here, I have an idea. Once we put it into all the monstrosities in our lands, invite me to Rennes. Does this plan please you? Yes, certainly. Of course. Then we are agreed. Now you'd better not go dying in battle on me. Not until then, at any rate. Do I have your word? Yes. Let us both live long enough to look back on this time. I'm sure that, when we do look back, it will be as the best of friends. Ephraim, do you remember when we first met? Uh, of course! It was at Castle Frelia, wasn't it? Eric and I had been invited to visit for your birthday celebration. Oh, I'm so glad you remembered! King Hayden seemed so delighted that we'd come to visit. I think that was the first time I met Innes, too. So, Ephraim, what did you think of the dress I was wearing? I... hmm... I'm sorry, but I don't think I got a good look at it at the time. Perhaps you don't remember, but as soon as I arrived, Innis challenged me. We ended up having an archery match right when the party began. I think Innis won that match. Do you remember my hair? I was so happy with it! Your... hair? Uh... Well, right after our archery match, Innis challenged me to the spear. I think I won that match! I'll bet you don't even remember what I said afterward. Uh, Ennis can be persistent. After Spears, we moved on to Jousting. That time, I think it was... Oh, you... You only remember what happened with my brother! You don't care about me at all, do you? Oh, no, no. That's not true. It's just... Fine! Why should I care about you when you can't even be bothered to care about me? You just keep having fun with my brother and don't pay me any mind at all! Tana, wait a minute! Hey! Don't go off on your own! What is she so upset about? Hello, Ephraim. Shall we take a break together? Well, you're in a better mood today. Huh? What do you mean? Oh, nothing. Never mind. So, uh, what can I do for you? Erica helped me prepare lunch. I haven't tried it yet, but I'm sure it's delicious. Would you like to eat with me? Tana, this is a battlefield. It's alright to take a break, but let's not let our guards down. You're always like that. You're so stiff and formal and detached all the time. Tana, what's the matter with you? You've been acting so odd lately. Yes, I'm acting funny. It's all your fault, Ephraim. Whenever I try to talk to you, you always keep your distance. 
No matter how hard I try, you never open up to me. That's not true. Is there someone else? What? It's just... You never pay any attention to me. You never have. Makes me so sad. All I want to do is be near you more and more. Uh, Tana, you're still just a child at heart, aren't you? Ephraim! Don't talk about me like that! No, I meant it as a compliment. Because you're so young, your words have such a simple, honest purity. I do appreciate your affection. Ephraim! Do you think you can make more time for me? So we could chat? Yes. Of course. But we don't have the luxury to stop and chat on the battlefield. We have an obligation to end this war first. Let's go. Yes. Alright. I'll see you later. I'm looking forward to it. <laughs>